up, Oasis students? How are y'all doing today? That is awesome. Y'all sound like y'all are energetic. It's the end of the school year, right? Are y'all excited? Yes. Real quick, if everyone could just move a row up. That made me feel a lot like if people could just be a little bit closer, it made me feel a lot better because everyone seems so far away. Uh, for you guys who don't know who I am, my name is Nikki Sanko. I have the amazing privilege and ability to get to lead y'all. Um, and that's like, I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm grateful to be here every single Thursday. We are in our series, The Struggle. And last week, Colin gave a great message. Anyone know what Colin talked about last week? Go ahead, Riley. Mental health. Yeah, Colin talked about a struggle that we all face, which is mental health and how we can face those struggles as Christians. And today, I'm going to talk about a struggle, another struggle that we all face, right? Uh, a struggle that we all constantly face, and that is the flesh. Temptation of the flesh, right? And some of y'all might be like, what are you talking about? We're going to get into it, but before that, let's pray. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this day. Father God, thank you for this service. Thank you for every single individual in this room. We pray that your presence is in this room, Father God. I pray that you are amplified, that the words you have given me um, are for somebody in this room that truly needs it, Father God. Um, I just pray that your spirit moves um, and you just have your way in this room. I pray this all in your Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Um, I need that prayer because I'm a little nervous, y'all, so bear with me. <laughs> All right. But when we hear the word flesh, right, we hear it a lot in church, right? The flesh, we hear it in the Bible, we hear it in sermons, we hear people talk about the flesh. But when we hear flesh, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Blood, Blood right? Your body. Because when, you when you, we're taught the word flesh, we're taught like blood, muscles, cartilage, meat, on our, the, anything that covers our bones, right? Skin, parts of her body, that is considered to be flesh. So to hear this word, the flesh, we're, we're fighting the flesh, fighting the flesh, it kind of makes you think like, wait, I'm fighting my own body? But when we mean flesh, it's actually a Greek translation of this great word called, uh, I hope I don't pronounce it wrong, sorox, sorox. And this word has like four different definitions. It can mean a lot of things. It's either the body, an animal, uh, covering of human bones, or meaning we're, meaning we're going to talk about today, which is a sinful, harmful nature. Uh, the, lexicon, the lexicon Bible translation, which we're going to have up on the screen, says that it's the flesh. It donates mere human nature, earthly nature of man, apart from divine influence, Therefore, prone to sin and opposed to God. Simply put, the flesh is the temptation and sinful struggles that our body craves to satisfy temporary pleasures. It's the opposite of what God wants for us. So when you hear anyone talk about the flesh, we got to fight the flesh. We got to stay away from the fleshly temptations. That's what they're talking about. Our human sinful nature. And we know we inherited this human sinful nature from when Adam and Eve ate the apple. Sin entered the world and everyone from there forth on has been born into sin. Right? So that's what we're, we're, we're fighting against. That's what we say when we're fighting against it. Paul puts it this way in Romans 7, 18. He says... I know that nothing good lives in me. That is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I want to do what is, I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I'm not really the one doing wrong. It is a sin living in me that does it. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I can relate to that. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I want to do the right thing, and I do the wrong thing. Sometimes I go to do the right thing, and I do the wrong thing. Sometimes I question why I even do things, right? I don't know about y'all. Y'all ever told a lie and be like, why did I tell that lie? Like, why, why, why did I do that? Like, the words just came out of my mouth, and it was a lie. Why did I gossip about that person? I didn't mean to gossip about that person. It just came out. 
it just happened. Or have you ever been mean to somebody just to be mean to them? Like you just woke up in a funky mood and you were like, everybody is just going to, I'm just going to be really mean. What are some of the struggles that we have within our flesh? That is our sinful nature, our flesh that makes us do those things, right? And in our life, we're going to have, we have a decision to make. And the decision is we can walk in our flesh, in our sinful desires, or we can walk in the spirit, which is a Holy Spirit living within us. So that's my first point. That's a decision we have. I remember to say it again. We can walk in the flesh, which is our sinful desires, or we can walk in the spirit, which is a Holy Spirit living within us. Paul says this in Galatians 5, 16 through 21. He says, so I say, walk by the spirit. And will you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. So that you are not to do whatever you want, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, Fits of rage, self, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies. But like I warn you as I did before, but those who live, in, who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. And I just read some of the things of the flesh, like things that come next to envy, hatred, right? These are just some of the things, witchcraft. When we say witchcraft, I don't really mean performing, of course, performing witchcraft, but horoscopes, crystals, stuff like that. Things, these are things of the flesh. The flesh and the spirit are in constant battle with each other. They're constantly fighting with each other. The flesh wants to corrupt us while the spirit wants to strive towards God. So the flesh wants nothing to do. Remember I said it's sin opposes anything to do with God. The flesh opposes anything that has to do with God. So it pulls us away from God while the spirit wants to strive towards God, wants to bring us closer to God, right? And I want to say this, walking in the flesh is easy. I don't know if y'all realize that. Walking in the flesh is so easy. We literally wake up every day and we do it, right? It's easy to lie. It does not come hard, right? It's easy to hate someone. I just don't like that person. I don't know why. Trust me, I got some people, I don't know what, there's, there's a, I don't like Kirsten Dunst. I don't know, I don't even know her. She's an actress, but I just don't like her. And I don't know why. But, it, you know, it's so easy just to like, I don't like that person. I don't know why I don't like that person. I don't like that person. It's easy to cheat, right? It's easy to cheat. It's easy to bully someone, right? It's just so easy. It comes naturally, right? It doesn't take a lot of work. It doesn't go against who you are. It's easy to be petty. It's easy to choose to be petty than choose to be like do the right thing, right? That person tit for tat. We're going to tit for tat it. It's easy. It comes naturally. It's easy to satisfy our sexual desires than it is to say no, right? It's easy to lust after someone, right? It comes naturally to us. But you know what's hard? And I don't know if y'all find it hard. It's hard to read our Bible, right? Right? I don't know if some of y'all struggle with that. It's hard to pray, right? It takes a lot of of energy and time. We have time for everything, but we never have time to read the Bible or pray. That's hard. That goes against our flesh, That goes against what we're naturally born in and what we have. It goes against our natural sinful nature. It is hard to live out the values that God has for us. That's why we always say the Christian walk is hard because we're we're working against something that's that's already born in us that we have to strive against. So we have to strive with the Holy Spirit towards God while the flesh is like, hey, do this. It comes naturally. Our first instinct is always that of the flesh. That's why it's easy. Our first instinct is always easy. I was watching a podcast the other day with Jackie Hill Perry, um, and she says she never does anything that comes easy. If it comes too easy to her flesh, 
she knows there's something up. She's not supposed to be doing it. It's sinful. And it sounds crazy, right? But she, but she gave an example. She said before she was saved, she used, to, she, she used to smoke weed. And she said before she was saved, it was so easy for her to find money to smoke weed. Even if she had to steal it. It was easy. It was like, it just, she had all the money, all the time, everything. Once she became saved and she, she came down to tithing to the church, it was hard. She made up every excuse in the book. But she didn't make an excuse to smoke weed. It wasn't that I don't have money, I don't have this. It was easy for her. So she said anything that comes easy to her, anything that comes naturally to her, she starts to question it because then she's like, hey, is this sin in my life? Is this something I need to walk away from? Because why is it so easy? There's a quote by a French author, author by the name of Francois, Francois, and it says, we always long for the forbidden things and desire what is denied for, denied, what is denied to us. So we as humans long for things that are forbidden and denied for us. For example, um, Eve wanted the apple because why couldn't she have the apple? Remember, that's what the serpent told her. Why wouldn't, he, why wouldn't God want you to have the apple? Why wouldn't he want, not the apple, but the forbidden fruit? Y'all, it's not an apple. It's a fruit. Uh, forbidden fruit. Um, why wouldn't God want you to have that fruit? Why wouldn't God want you to have that knowledge? She was curious because she couldn't have it. Why couldn't she have it? When we're told that we can't have something, what happens? We want, we want it more. We start to crave it. Like, hey, I want that more. I want that thing. Why can't I have it? And that's what happens. Our flesh wants us to have things that we're not supposed to have. Anything that God tells us not to do, our flesh is attracted to. And it comes natural to want to want those things. Natural to crave those things and go after those things. Um, about, I don't know if y'all, y'all, y'all are on TikTok, right? I know y'all are on TikTok. Um, a couple, I want to say a year ago or a couple years, I don't know, time, time goes like lightning. So um, there was a TikTok challenge, right, that people had with their toddlers where they would like place a bowl of candy or like something, cookies or something in front of a toddler and they would leave the room and they would have to see like, they record their toddler and see if they would eat it or not. Y'all, y'all heard of this challenge, right? Right? As a few people are like, Y'all were all in it, and now y'all are just like, it's okay. But check out this video real quick, and I want to show you guys something. They're going to fail. <laughs> Look at Mama. Mama is going to go downstairs. I have to go get some work done. While I'm downstairs, I don't want you to eat any candy or marshmallows or cookies. When I come back upstairs, then you can eat them. Don't eat any. Okay. Don't eat any. I'll be right back. No food. Yes. Hold your arms. Wait until we come back and then you can eat it, okay? She's touching. Don't eat it, James. Hey, Jamesy, no, 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 no. Jamesy, you, you put that back. Hey, Mommy, I have a problem. Jamesy just touched. Hey, Jamesy, can you please not eat food? Uh, yeah. Hey, Jamesy. Can you wait for for my parents? Yeah. Okay, James. And so no eating food. That's what mom said. Yeah. No eating food. No, no eating food. That's what mom said. No eating food. That's what mom said. No eating food. Okay, time's up. We're coming. Let's. I, I love that video. When I saw it, I was like, that is so cute. That is so funny. 
Let me drink some water real quick. Sorry, y'all heard me drink water. Um, <laughs> but real quick, real quick, that video is a great example of what Paul says in Galatians 5 of a spirit and the flesh going at it. All right? James is the flesh. James wasted no time. Before her, before her parents even left the room, she was like, I want it. <laughs> She, put, she was like, I want this. I'm going to eat it now. I got this. Nobody can tell me nothing. And her brother was like, no, you cannot have it. And they began to battle. You see, she was fighting him. She was, he was holding her back. He was like, no, we cannot have it. We have to wait. And that's what happens. Our flesh is like, pop off. Go off on that person. Our flesh is like, hey, you really want to take drugs? Take it. It'll make us feel good, right? And our spirit is like, no. No, 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 no. You can't do that. That's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to walk with Christ. We're supposed to do what God called us to do. And here's another example of, of, of a spirit in the flesh fighting. The other day, I take, every Saturday, I take a Zumba class. I actually take two cardio classes. Um, and I was in my class, and I had a water bottle, and class was about to start, and this class is really popular. It gets really packed. And so I put my water bottle down to save my spot, and I went to go check in. And I come in, and there's somebody in my spot. And my water bottle is moved. So I nicely go up to the lady, and I said, hey, excuse me, do you plan on standing there? And she looks at me, she goes, I don't know whose water bottle that is. And I go, well, it's mine. And I was like, do you plan on standing there? And she proceeds to ignore me and just looks straight ahead. So I pick up my water bottle. And the girl next to her was like, do you want my spot? I said, I don't want your spot. And I went to the back of the room. And everything in me, everything in me, I wanted to tell her all kinds of stuff about herself. I wanted to just act out of character. And the spirit in me said, this is a public place. <laughs> you cannot act crazy. You cannot do that. You are exemplifying the Lord. I, let me tell you, Celeste is like swing. <laughs> I was, and I was just like, you are exemplifying the Lord. I was talking to somebody. I said, she lucky I know the Lord. She's lucky I know the Lord, because if I didn't know the Lord, I was so at the end of at the end of class, I went up to her politely. I introduced myself. I asked her what her name was. I said, ma'am, you took my spot. She's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. I didn't know. I didn't see you, whatever, whatever. I was like, it's cool. It's fine. But I acted very calm and collected because that was the Holy Spirit working through me. If that was unsaved, Nikki, class would have been over. It would have been done and over with. No, no, no Zumba for nobody, okay? <laughs> Zumba, Zumba's done, okay? I would have acted all out of character. Y'all would have seen me on Instagram on a viral video somewhere acting crazy. But the Lord... <laughs> The Lord and the Holy Spirit held me back. But the flesh, I'm telling you, the flesh told me. It told me to act out of character. And I know some of y'all know that feeling because the flesh be telling y'all. The flesh be telling y'all to act out of character. Your first instinct is to act out of character. And that is our sinful nature. But the Spirit says, no, we cannot do that because we are exemplifying God for people. We are to be light. We are supposed to be an example of what God does. That's why we wear those bracelets. What would Jesus do? It's to remind us, what would Jesus do? Jesus would turn the other cheek and walk away, right? And this is what walking in the spirit looks like. My, fre my flesh is still, my flesh is still going to want to sin. It is going to want to sin. Thy natural instinct is still going to be want to sin. But that sinful nature uh, isn't going to go away. But we can battle the flesh with the help of a spirit. Paul says this in Galatians 5. This is, as we continue, it says, but the fruit of a spirit is love, joy, peace, forbidance, that's such a weird word for Biden's uh, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step 
with the Spirit. Those things are the opposite of what the flesh, what Paul talked about earlier in, five, in Galatians 5, it is a complete opposite. We have love instead of hatred. We have self-control instead of popping off on people, right? We have forgiveness. We have kindness. That is what the Spirit tells us to do. That's what God wants us to do. And I love the Greek word that Paul uses in the original translation of let us keep in step with the Spirit is uh, stroshel, which means to walk in line with the Spirit, right? So before I was talking about walking in the flesh, we can walk in the flesh or we can walk in line with the Spirit. Uh, question, in kindergarten, what's the hottest position to be in? Line leader. Line leader. That's like everybody wants to be the line leader. Everybody wants to be in the front of the line. Right? Everybody wants to be in the front of the line. Don't, if you ain't in kindergarten or pre-K, who wants to? They, they fighting to be in the front. And that's what the Holy Spirit is in our lives. He is our line leader. We don't just walk in life and, and he follows, the Holy Spirit follows behind us. We don't just walk in life and he walks next to us. He, we walk in life and we walk in line with the Spirit. The Spirit leads us, right, in life. Leads us towards righteousness. Leads us towards living like Jesus. When we lean into the Holy Spirit, when we allow him to lead us and not us lead and, and it follow like I'm doing whatever I want, it can lead us in the right direction. Those things that come naturally no longer come naturally anymore because we're taking our time and we're like, Spirit, what should I do? What way should I go? I know my, myself says I should do this, but let me know if this is the right thing to do. It is through the Holy Spirit that we have the power to crucify the flesh. And that's my second point, which is it's through the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit leading us, that we have the power to crucify the flesh. Like I said earlier, the desires of the flesh don't ever go away. They never go away. They're never going to go away. Whatever that temptation that you're dealing with, whatever that thing that you're struggling with, that, that thing is never going to go away. You can't pray it away. You can't whatever. It doesn't go away. But what we can do is lean into the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to lean us, to make us, help us fight that temptation. Fight that desire. When I find myself praying, when I find myself worshiping God, when I find myself spending time with God, and when I find myself reading my Bible, I find myself less susceptible to those fleshly desires those fleshly struggles. I find myself going more into the right direction because I'm closer to God. When I put on the armor of God, which is in the sword of the spirit, I'm able to slay the flesh. Jesus puts it this way himself. He says this in Luke 9, 23. He said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Deny, in some translations it says to die to self. Self being my flesh. And pick up our cross daily. Every day. We are to die to our flesh every day. We are to put our flesh to death and pick up our cross just like Jesus did in Calvary. That's what we were meant to do. The other day, I think I want to say like a month ago. I'm not really sure. I'm, like I said, I'm really bad with time. Um, I went to a worship night, right? And worship was beautiful, and there was this great speaker there. And she was talking, and she asked the room. She said, is anybody dead in here? And a whole room, kind of like what y'all just did. They were like, what? <laughs> and then she asked it again, is anybody dead in here? And the room answered, no. Like, what are you talking about? No, nobody's dead. We're alive. We're, we're alive. I'm breathing. The person next to me is breathing. It was Reuni, but she was breathing. Julie was breathing. Everybody around me was breathing. Nobody was dead in the room. And she asked it again. And then she begins to explain that every morning we have a choice to live or die. Right? Every morning we have a choice to live or die. And that choice is to live in the flesh or die to it. That's the choice we have every morning we wake up. We can either live in the flesh, 
That means living everything that we want, every single desire we want, every first reaction that comes to our head, we have the, we have the ability to choose to live that way or we have the ability to die to our flesh. The minute we put our feet on the, when you get up out the bed and you turn and your feet go, bloom, you have a choice to die to it. And by dying, you choose Christ. Today, I choose you, Lord. I'm going to pray. I'm going to worship. I'm going to walk in step with you, God. I'm not going to do everything else. I'm not going to do what the world is doing. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to walk with you. And we have that choice to make ourselves, right? We can walk with our desires or we can walk with Jesus. So I ask this question. Is anybody in this room dead? Right? Has anyone chosen to give up what comes easy to them? Put to death their selfish desires and walk in line with the Spirit. Is anybody in this room dead? At the end of Galatians 21, Paul says this. He says, he gives us a a very clear warning. He says that those who choose to live in the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. So do you want to walk with the world? Do you want to do what the world is doing? I know y'all see what the world is doing. The world real crazy right now. But y'all see what the world is doing. Do you want to walk with the world? Do you want to do everything that everybody else is doing? People who do not believe in Christ. Do you want to indulge in the world? Do you want to do drugs? Do you want to have sex with everybody? Do you want, do you, do you want, to, do you want to talk about people? Do you just want to glorify, worship rocks and crystals and the stars? Or do you want to worship the one that died on the cross for you and on the third day rose again? That is a choice that you have to make. It is that simple. You can continue to feel empty once those desires are gone or satisfied, those cravings are gone. You can continue to feel empty, continue searching for the next craving that will satisfy the the, the thing that's burning inside of you, or you can choose Jesus. Or do you want to spend your eternity in life in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus says this in John 4 when he's talking to the woman at the well. He says this, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up into eternal life. The flesh leaves us wanting more, always. You're never going to be satisfied. You're always going to want the next thing over and over and over and over again. You can drink from the well of Jesus and have eternal life and never want again. Be satisfied, be whole and complete. Be perfect in him. With every head bow, every eyes closed, come on, every head. If anybody in this room, I want to give people an opportunity. Um, if you're in this room and you want eternal life, you want to stop living in your flesh. You want to accept Jesus. If that's you in this room, all you have to do is pray this simple prayer. And it goes like this. Just repeat after me. Jesus, I'm tired of giving into my fleshly desires. I want to walk in the spirit with you. I repent of my sins and I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. And I welcome you into my heart and every part of my life. Amen. If anybody in this room, I still want everyone's eyes closed. I want anybody in this room prayed this prayer and you feel confident enough to raise your hand. I want to see it. Here we go. All right. All right, I want to pray. Well, let's give them a round of applause because that, that's bold. That's bold. And now I want to pray for the people who have already accepted Christ but are struggling because we all struggle with the flesh. I don't accept Christ, and, and like I said, it doesn't go away. Those desires don't go away. That battle doesn't go away. That's a battle that we fight every single day. We have to choose if we want to be dead or if we want to be alive. So I want to pray for y'all. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I pray for these children in this room, Father God, as they embark in in the battle of spiritual warfare, Father God. Um, It is not an easy battle that we fight, but we do not fight it with our hands. We do not fight it with... um, with our weapons, but the weapons that we do choose is the weapon that you gave us, which is the Holy Spirit, Father God. It's our Bible. It's your word. It's the strength that you give us to fight those things, to walk in line with you, Father God. I pray that they end up choosing you every single day, that they choose the right thing, that they're slow to make the decisions in their life because they want to please you, Father God. 
I want to really, uh, in this room, to raise up followers of Christ, not followers of the world, Lord. I pray that you give them the strength and the peace to always choose you, Lord. Pray this in Jesus' name, amen.